last session is difficult. But we can handle that, right? Because we need to understand what's difficult to make change. So um, we've got a video to watch and then a panel to help us unpack it. And um, thank you for being here for this difficult conversation. Uh, greetings to you all. My name is Yulian Matambo and I'm the chairlead of Marange Women's Alliance, which is a women's organization based in Marange in Manikalen province of Zimbabwe. The Marange Women's Alliance is a grassroots movement to prevent human rights abuses by providing education, self-empowering support, and by raising awareness in the international uh, community. Our vision is that all women and children of Marange are able to live safely and move freely in the region without fear, intimidation, and political pressure. Just to give a brief background of Marange, it's a diamond-rich community under Protected Places and Areas Act since 2008 when uh, formal and uh, informal mining began. Uh, since then, we have been uh, observing with the bleeding hearts high rates of sex trafficking happening in our area. And as mining activities continue, both formal and informal, women and girls are trafficked into Marange under different circumstances daily. And the following interviews are from women and girls who have been trafficked into Marange for sex work. We hope that this documentary will bring out the reality of what our fellow women are going through. Nandine 14 years, Tanga Kwangu, Tikafura Natkatiza, Tikayoko no Boch, Tanswati, Kunima Diamonds, the Gucha Bamari. I get almost two years, little Mombas, Gazumbuana marriage. Mushuri Mugundu was one a marriage, young UAE. Taiti, never name a bridge at ever now, she does a syndicate and bend a bus. Chitika and the Wumunda, name a bridge ever. I did mean Jim Nosarami named soldier, I'm charred, I'm soldier, waiter, Madame Boss. Kutiti one kushanda. No kushanda wata ita kuskom soja iya sungon farrao. Ngambe no marriage. Nga garafo iya sindro marriage. Asi je marriage chaga zuramba. Ndika zoka. Kuti ndi ende kumunda. Chapano ne papa time boka iwa chita se. Apa ono chida mare kutuj. Ubadere ndi poro kugar. Ndagona chaga kuzira kuti time ka penda mbawa. Ndabuda zungwani sindi ndi ne mare. Sandagona kuti kuita sex worker zvimwe zvinhu zvino gona kuti ndirarame saka basa iri ndane nguwa naro ndi naro ndiri momariri ah the artisanal miners when they want to make when they want to gain favors from the uh, security forces they go and look for ladies in towns in other remote areas they promise the ladies they are going to give them some work and they are going to have a lot of money so they take them down to Chiazwa Diamonds uh, where they do artisanal mining with them. When they get into the fields there are uh, security forces there so they tell the ladies to go and uh, stay with the uh, security forces at night. They have sex with them and paid sex while the artisanal miners are busy taking the ore outside. They smuggle the ore out, out of the field. After that night they take the ladies and go back with them. They use them again for sex. So this is uh, sex trafficking. They take, take them uh, for sex, they sleep with them and then they exchange them for the ore that they get in the fields. Uh, when they go and look for diamonds, when they get the diamonds, the ladies mostly they are not given the money. They are just given little money so that they could cook, they could wash for the artisanal miners, and they could have sex with them. This is the and the Katanga with Obasa in Dakunok. Then go to Andruchago, Maria Gurara, my good in the Chingito and Ong. I shall not go to Sanganana, Zuzaka Oma. Do I have a net and go to Rotuka and Dagumun, the Lessie and Ongo and Dona Kumana? Says as a good man, Ruchera, Messica. Umano go back to us as a good guinea veragumund. Uskadi Otokubata as a panas of sweet. Cause oil or um, no. And it has sent his as a good city or banker. Many women who go down to Marange Diamond Mines, they are not women, you can say they are not educated, they have nothing to do. 
In Zimbabwe, there's no work. These women have tried everything. The only thing that has been left now is sex. They are commercial workers. It ends there. And I got to go up in the mountains. And she was in Kuroa. Murmanda and Nawa and Shungu. That we are going to be in Kuchiyazo. Because Maria and I are going to be in Shoma. They are going to be After going to be in Kuchiyazo. After going to be in Kuchiyazo, she will. No, go to Oa. No, go to Oa. No, go to Oa. No, go to Oa. So she will do no bad things. My Tawa and I are going to be in Kuchiyazo. We 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 are going to Oshika five dollars here. I chamu diga no teyaga batana to chinga tam shop. Oto guti zoto si wasna ma. Saka odunga da odo odo ono chango jume rekuit. Most of the women who are trafficked to shias were they face risks of uh, contracting HIV and AIDS, uh, tuberculosis, most contagious diseases, STIs. Ba, ewa kure ni kwa tega ra kwa tatab. Saka mono e akandi funza guti ono. Zivao wakayo shuka pa chukoro shuka pa pasho. Kama mtu naka gumira grade seven. Kano sio chini ungele na kati na kana jana kano sio. Saka mno e aibu ari wani ndi de wana. Iari kumbere ndi kuma shure. Sisi kuma shure. Saka mko mna e akaba chita ora ni muno ni phone. Mno e aibu kubedi bridges chiba kuno kuma shingo tiende kuhu. The bandit can add sing it a sang and a one am a man of dick chairs with tea and a shanga quansa quit. But no sangana just sang and a coma eight half eight to fan on get a sangan. Pangoon Saga at half eight to no fan on get a sangana pangoon. But just sangana patch chessa chessa mass at a motor. Motor a kang and a malaysia blue pump so. Angwaka jeka kufana na nene zimu mota pasasi. Saka akati kati kwenye tasanga na afu eighty exactly. Tisha baadhi zama la eighty kutanga kepi riketatu. Nisweze sasa sonda ingo shuona semu na ngata asiba akichirungu. Saka kaka baya ngo tume na na chano di chano siba. Saka na ngo tipe paka ngo tipe tiche farm banda kusoti ngo ndoto apa duse kushika. Taka banda tu tini ni njuru kuwa mdumu. Tungo ndoto mdumu chingo mdumu baka tayari watu tondo mira tashika pai. Shops na dibo. Shindo shikoko pamoja shops sisi nenda kwa bandatu pamoja shule mbizi jana na nani mira pamoja shops sijae pamoja shule mbizi jana. Kwa bandatu mdomo mangu mdomo mangu. Apa kwa kato shiba. Ibanda andi tizika wenye wa kadai. Saka time wenye kana andi tizai tizai inda wa kadai so inda kwa bandai na nakuwa shule kwenye moto. Kwa bandai inda kwa left. Kwa bandai kiza mukomo. Ando gani mukomo? Kwe chingua. Uya ando kufuna katishi. Inda shika pangundo. Uya katini inda kushika. Saka paku sanga na kwa wageta sawa kanga bata wudan kuditia bata zama light kundo timu no mu no hawa kasa maku dzama kodi ndaka kanga ndaka garamu gomu basa idipe dion bonda kwa wanda u gwe hawa kasa muzama tava chienda ndion gwe ndaka dinu ndaka dzika gomu saka paku dzika gomu ndaka wana wapana waskana wanga waka mira parod de bonda shikonda chora na nyaya simu nanga nda sna kana phone ni phone danda siya umota kana butu ndani sina de bonda wau zo nyaya de waskana watenga tu din tu bati de Asima basi la wakandi tawa kandi tani kumbwa kwa petu petu kupe pepe kubat. Vanena vanendo watai koko kumbwa kwa shu. Mangua na acha ndo kuseranda sina kana mali. De vandi ti yuo kuto uzokele kumbwa urukude rende kati e kumbwa ndugu la uzokele. Akanzi yuo kana kuto uzokele mali ni mali koko kupa ndi kwa nse koko kupa. Unga gona elukita basi la ndino uite ni ni. De kati ndino kwa nisa semu na ngai daku inda kupi. Andi la uswadi basi la chunde re iya kabwa pe kwa ndugu gesa ndo kuto ndipo oyem. Indo kupindwa mui morodi na e. Tashu kapa ya pa ya akabandi fuzi uti o unoto shikoti kana mna kaku funza uti Maria ka Maria shote mna chana uti. Ajuno shikiswa shaka wand chuno shika shaka siana siana. No shika kuku sanga na pamo no kuna sanga na ni moon andi je uno ondo bifeka zako ndo shaka naka naka. O wana ngani nzara zake 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 reba no kuna kudin ko padula kundo mui wasi na kushinza. Pamoja na mese kundo mno bara dini, anato damu kana utini ngera anato dini, raba kutara. Zaga kwa yano yano raba ni waka pedha sharuku pedha shoshu. Iwa pamoja sala ususuzi na sala ni. So these are the risks that they 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 face, and mostly they 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 have pregnancies that they don't want. You end up having that mostly when you stay with a man who says I've married you.
they cohabit and nothing else, it ends there. Most of the women, when they face uh, gender-based violence, they are killed. And most of these things, when they happen, even the police do not talk about it. The body is ferried to, to the girl's homestead and it ends there when she's buried. This is what most of the women face. Chagata out into your group, watch your adwa. The show tea in the committee swan in room one or two. No one now, a chiva dick. A swan on the Rasid and Buyao, the two not to tea upon a exchange. Eagat is actually in the South Africa. Pamupacho na Unusanga Nina Gadiaqua. A ziki, Unengo Rajo and my drugs, Unoto Nate of Radanae. A sort in a work to Tinati Shidamari, Tungus of Shingirida, Kusangana Nagadaro. Pamupacho now no Buris Rabanga. Kutindipe mari yangu, pangupacho uroa. Nguosa ngani zuriwe shagasi ya nishagata edzi, siki. Ne mbu. Aaa, ah, iya zunezi ya akuna mari. Uka ato mkawine 20 dollars, uningu watu shanda. Sasho kusina mari, asupi ni mari. 50 dollars. We believe it's our fight together as a people to safeguard our girls and women. Let's protect them in every way possible. Thank you for taking your time to listen here and understand the faith of our ladies. I just want to um, say about the making of the film that that was um, something that the Meringue Women's Alliance wanted to do, and something that the sex workers wanted to speak out on. And some of the it was a, it was a very long documentary, but um, they wanted to talk about their helplessness um, in the gender-based violence that um, they face with the work that they do. Uh, they wanted to talk about their fear of STDs, and that's their biggest fear is getting HIV. And um, they all, also, the many women that spoke wanted alternative livelihoods. So, um, and also that was filmed um, in Merengue by um, a young man, Carl, who's Merengue Women's Alliance has been working with on media things and edited by Carl as well. And, and then we edited that down a bit. So. Abigail, I'm hoping that you can begin with us and tell the crowd um, who you are and uh, bit about your background and so when they hear what you have to say they understand the importance. Thank you very much and greetings from Zimbabwe. My name is Abigail. I like being called Abby. Svanda is my surname. Um, I'm a gender specialist having studied uh, women and gender studies with the Africa uh, Women's University in Africa and uh, later studied uh, gender and policy with the Great Zimbabwe uh, University. Uh, but I come from Marange, which we call Kubocha, a place that is desolate, dry, hot, and very poor. That's why we call it Kubocha. Um, I worked in Bocha for a very long time as a teacher. Um, during my work in 2006, that's when there was diamond discovery. By then, I had not studied gender studies, but I was just like any other community woman. In 2006, when the diamond um, was discovered, I also participated as a local, as a Gwejalin. You know, if you say Gweja, I'll be happy because it defines the language that will relate to our story. Egwejalin is the woman that goes into the diamond mining field and participates. So I really relate uh, to the stories, despite having uh, progressed and become the person who I am. So, in 2007, that's when the place, uh, as our leader said there, was um, cordoned off to say it's a protected area, which brings the problems more to the women. The women are now marginalized. They have lack of information. They have no freedom of movement. Everything is just 
falling apart on them. Uh, they've lost land rights because of relocations that came with, uh, with the mining and everything uh, began happening in 2007. But um, mining was also gaining uh, momentum on the other hand, bringing in what you call artisanal miners here or in the uh, jewelry industry, you call them artisanal miners, maybe because they're licensed, they work formally, and they are known. But in Zimbabwe, we have these people coming who are not formal artisanal miners, the Gwejas. And they infiltrate the community. And they are working in cohorts with the government uh, security forces, the military, the police, and the, the mining uh, security guards to smuggle diamonds out of Marange. So what's the, the role of women in all this? That's where the gradualin comes. Thus, if they put the lean in front, it means the girl, the guaja is the boy, the male. So the girls are now um, taken, I would say, exploited to give so, uh, sexual favors and sexual satisfaction to the military, the police, and the guards. Why are they falling prey? It's because uh, these duty bearers are coming into a remote area where they are taken from a different county to come and work in this other county where they don't bring their girlfriends, they don't bring their wives. They come in here and stay and protect the diamonds. And because it's a secluded area, they also cannot go out of there. They're staying in the bush. I hope the pictures really dis uh, depicted how it is. It's practically in a very remote uh, place, a place where there is no um, you know, food for everyone, including the, po the police and the soldiers themselves. So the women are then taken by these artisanal miners, illegal artisanal miners, to go and service the duty bearers. And that is the form of trafficking that is happening. The problem is the community that we are talking about is heavily patriarchal. Um, traditional leaders in Africa, they've got their own values, you know, and the tradition that women should not do this, women should be like this. So automatically, if you are a woman, maybe who is taken uh, by falsehood to say, let's go to, to the field to go and mine so that you make money. The moment you go out to go and do that venture, you are, um, they, they view you as, a, as a, a loose woman because it's a heavily dominated industry where they don't expect that a woman will go there, despite the poverty, which they know. The woman has to provide for the family. But at the same time, they cannot go and practice mining or any other ventures out there. So that's the problem that happens. If the woman is taken falsified to go and uh, work in, in, in the field, they are called a sex worker. They are called a prostitute. No matter how they are taken, that's where uh, trafficking is concealed there. That is our story today, that there is trafficking that is happening in Marange, but it is very discreet. The women are taken to go and work there, but when they get there, they are not going to work. They are going to be used as sex object. Abby, can you give us an idea of how large this issue is? Um, you know, how many minors are there and how many women do you think are involved? Oh, multitudes of minors. Minors come from all over Zimbabwe because remember the diamond is lucrative. Of course, 
um, after the 2006 free for all diamond mining, uh, it really did scale down. But because there is um, a syndicate system, you know, if, I, if we say syndicate, there we are saying there is a mutual understanding between the duty bearers and the artisanal miners, right? So that lures more of those wages to come. And unfortunately, when they come, they don't end at the mining concession. They get into the villages. They get to the common people. And the government has not protected the what? The community, yeah? People might say um, communities were relocated from the concession, but not all. Is there anyone or any organization that is there or that has given focus to this um, and come in to try to help? I would say um, this is a, 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 um, a phenomenon that Marange Women's Alliance just unearthed. Why so? Everyone else views these women as sex workers. We don't call them sex workers there. They are called prostitutes. And prostitutes, they're an illegal entity. It's illegal to be a prostitute in Zimbabwe. And no one will pay attention to you. No one will pay attention to them, I mean, um, so because they're stigma. doing something that is illegal, the stigma, yeah. So there are no organizations that have really paid attention uh, to them. Marange Women's Alliance is the first uh, community-based women-only organization in that area. We've had uh, organizations which are also male-dominated, but after realizing that um, women's issues are not being addressed, Marange Women's Alliance was created. Yeah. Um, so I think all of us in this room have probably heard about or heard of the Marange Women's Alliance but can you just tell us a little bit about how it was formed? Because I think under these circumstances, you can only imagine now just how brave these women are. Okay, thank you. First, it was about human rights. Uh, there were violations, which now we can maybe say they've scaled down where people were being beaten by dogs, and you are the mother, you have to face a child that is coming from the, the concession that has been beaten by dogs. Pro police brutality, you call it, and um, a lot of other violations that were happening, arrests, uh, and so forth. But then with interventions that came in between, um, we started to notice a new dimension of, of violations because we'd have stories of women who have experienced gender-based violence. Then you trace how did it start? What happens? Then you see now there is a link between gender-based violence and the mining that is happening in Marange. Go ahead, Sue. So um, in how we started, in how Marange Women's Alliance started, um, we had the Human Rights um, in Diamonds Forum, and that was um, uh, helped along with um, Kimberly Process Civil Society, Human Rights Watch, and I believe World Diamond Council may have been on at that original one that we had. And that was really at the onset of COVID when there were a lot of what you call in the community reactions, mm -hmm. right? When, when um, the guards and the police can go into your home, you can explain it more, and look for diamonds for any reason. And um, one of the things that um, really came out was that um, women would be put in this jail area because of the reactions um, for three days and a lot of rapes were happening. Um, the girls thought that was the only way that they could get out and, um, and they wouldn't get food. I think you got water, you had to pay for food. Um, and from what I understand, they didn't even realize they had the right to have water. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, but what we did at that time, and we, I mean the audience, supporting Marenghi Women's Alliance is we started a petition um, to the Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company. And the petition um, called for the ends of rape and called for um, the rapes that had been reported to be prosecuted. 
Has that happened at all? Yes. Bravo. Yes. So thank you, everyone, for the support in signing that petition. Thank you. That was a, a very effective uh, intervention uh, because uh, we went with the women to the courts. We took them through. And with the help of RJT, um, transportation of those women was provided, uh, welfare for them while they were, they were at the courts because the courts are 80 kilometers away. It's not likely that anything will happen within the vicinity of the concession. So most likely, women will not be able to go to the courts, which also becomes a, a, a crime. Because if you, 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 you report a court, a, a court case and you don't attend, in Zimbabwe you are arrested. Whether you are the defendant or you are the applicant, you have defaulted. So RJT really uh, assisted to get these court cases pushed. And uh, it was a success. And we are happy that um, our interventions are still going on, including um, the communication which she talked about earlier. As Marange Women's Alliance, we are able to mobilize uh, and identify the victims. Identifying the victims uh, of sex trafficking, hearing their stories out, and giving them whatever little support we can. But the problem that is still there is there is no prosecution much. There is no reporting because of this um, victim sex worker uh, problem that is prevailing. The police will just say, oh, Maure Munoneza, sex workers, you have a problem. And nothing happens. No one reports. And the perpetrators just go uh, uh, um, unarrested for the case. That is still the problem uh, that we are facing. So even though you have this opportunity now to go to court, you still, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like you can get very far in that situation because that sounds, if I may, corrupt or evil even better as well. The fact that um, we call it state funded because the, the fact that it's the police and the military that are perpetrators obviously gives them immunity. You get the point. Because for it to be then called a crime that a policeman is um, committed, it has to go through the Commissioner General of the Police to endorse it. And the police, uh, the Commissioner General is in Harare. Harare is about uh, 260, 280 kilometers from uh, 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 the locality where it's happening. So it all becomes very difficult for women uh, they, to get proper prosecution because the, the police at the grassroots, they will just say, oh, you have to go and report further up. What is the average age of a woman who is involved in this? It's very sad because, mind you, I told you that uh, Marange is a heavily patriarchal uh, locality where there's also a stronghold of an apostolic faith um, church which believes in uh, polygamy and where young women as old as 12, 13, are married off within uh, that religion. I don't call it a church, it's a religion. Um, so they are in between a hard rock and a, a rock and a hard surface. Very young, from the ages of 12, 13, under 18, the girls are, are, are just sold off. Some of them, uh, they are just married off to the guajas. Why? Because the guajas has the money. They lure them with the money and because of also high illiteracy rates, the parents will be very happy to marry off um, the girls to the graduates because they bring money. And that on its own is a form of trafficking. Yes, so our argument is the laws and the policies in Zimbabwe, they are looking at uh, trafficking, and trafficking at a broader perspective, you know, border controls, who goes in, who goes out. But what is happening internally is 
not being talked about. No one is paying attention. So we are saying, let's start at the grassroots. Let's protect the women. While we protect the diamonds, why don't we protect the women from being uh, trafficked? Of course, some are coming from outside Marange, some women, yeah, from different counties, you call them here. In Zimbabwe, we call them provinces. And most don't know. Yeah. That, that's correct, right? Mm. Yeah. No one screens to say, OK, these ladies are coming in from where? For what? Yeah. And who is bringing them? Like you had the story of that one who came from Buhera. That was quite a distance away. Yeah. So being that we're at a jewelry conference, I want to just bring this kind of down to, to diamonds. Mm -hmm. So you know, here we hear that there is this Kimberly process, of course, and it's supposed to stop the illegal import um, of diamonds. Mm -hmm. I assume that's not um, the solution here. Um, clearly, it is not working here or in a lot of other places. But can you talk a little bit about what you know, the role that these diamonds play and what the possibility is, what can be done perhaps from, from your space on the ground? Yeah, first and foremost, we are talking about um, marginalization. We are talking about people who are locked in, right? You cannot, it's a closed community. Uh, no one will know what is happening inside because it's a protected area, right? If Kimberley process was coming, uh, the, what do you call sabukus, the, um, the local headman, right? Uh, I gathered we are going to have a meeting, highly diplomatic meeting. Um, people should behave in such a manner. We have got, um, I'm sorry, the information that I might be saying here can be very uh, sensitive and but it should be said. The, 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 the ununiformed forces are unleashed into the community, right? That's the reaction. Who are you? Where are you going? Where is your ID? But I'm within my locality, my home area, right? They round the people up. Some of them are locked in three days or they are taken to some far place away from their home, can you imagine? My, my, my nephew uh, experienced that. Do you remember? I sent you a picture of them in a cage, locked up, yes. Um, the way I would lock up my dogs, in a cage, a fence, diamond fence, that's where they are locked in. Because Kimberley process should not see that and the, should not interact with the community. Then we'll take, uh, they'll take uh, ZCDC, uh, that's the, the mining company. They will escort the visitors to the you know, glamorous places. This is the school we built, this lab. This is the, uh, the borehole that we sunk, but maybe that's only one water pump. Uh, and you know, the flashy things. The true story. So who has come and been sort of toured around to see these imaginary situations that, or has anyone come in rather, um, that could if being told the truth or being sort of brought around by you ladies could make a difference? Well, Diamond Council has been to Zimbabwe, but they did not get to see the true story. The Kimberley process has been a couple of times, but um, do they know that women are being trafficked into Marangi? Have they talked to the women? No. So um, what can we do if, and you know, obviously we are far, um, and I think this room full of people obviously would never purchase a diamond that they ever suspected came from an area like this. But what can we do? Um, to be honest, this is appreciated because already you have given the platform for a voice. Um, 
it's not easy to speak out in Zimbabwe. It's gotta be I've been followed. Uh, yeah. You know it. Absolutely. Yeah? Sure. Um, it's not easy to have a platform to, to, to say it. So what you can do is to continue giving us the platform for the voice. Continue supporting, you see what is in the picture. Uh, the basic, women gather, they get the information, they are taught their rights. Uh, we have a, a WhatsApp platform uh, where we, we, you know, we meet every Tuesday. Uh, you've seen the slides. And um, have conversations. Women share their challenges, they share their experiences and everything. So if that is supported, I think we go an extra mile. We need, I think here we've got um, um, people at different levels. This should be written so that the whole world knows. We need further research into this uh, issue of internal sex trafficking that is happening in Marangi because it cannot remain a, a silent story. It should be out in the public domain. Completely. Yeah, that's what we believe in. So most importantly, to give the women a voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Susan, I'd love you to talk about those Tuesday talks a bit. I have, I guess I could call it the great pleasure and honor of being on those and they come um, and I get to listen and it is incredible to hear these strong, smart, kind, caring, amazing women really, really talking to each other about what they could possibly do and just how scary it actually is in reality though. Um, can you talk a little bit about what those Tuesday talks have done for this group? Absolutely. Um, I wanna actually first call out what can be done and Emily Chelsea sponsored the um, women's meeting for the feedback of the documentary that was shown where Merengue Women's Alliance had all of the women that spoke in the local community come. And, um, and that meant a lot to be able to have that meeting to have the people that were in the film see it and to give feedback on what they thought of seeing themselves and what they, they, um, what they said. So that is one huge way to support and um, those sponsorships mean a lot. Um, we've been working on the billboard campaign now for over a year, and the way that we've um, done that campaign is Billy, the chairwoman who you saw there, um, remotely did the class with Joe Becker from Human Rights Watch, and Joe was, didn't know how it was going to work, and it worked out wonderfully. And um, Abby has been working with that framework to put together a campaign um, as you know, Human Rights Watch does it. And so that's been a lot of then going back and asking the members, um, the leaders, to go in and um, speak with the sex workers, speak in the communities, um, be doing interventions. And I think the last and final stage on that campaign is the questions that you've put forward for Susan, other Susan Marenghi Women's Alliance member, to go and work with um, we also have to give a shout out to the, what they say in the member in charge, which is the, the superintendent of police is a woman. And she came in at about the same time as Marenghi Women's Alliance um, was being born. And she's been there, uh, you know, all for the events. So she get, how'd she get there? It just, that just, you know, this, her story? the whole context of this, <laughs> that just sounds so It's, it's very possible. interesting. Uh, it just started naturally with, um, conversation with our chairperson, Billy, um, because for you to have a, a gathering, no matter how small, in Zimbabwe, you have to go through the police clearance. Yes. So Billy would go there several times to ask for, for clearance to hold a women's symposium you know, to hold a, a clean-up campaign. We've done uh, several clean-up campaigns. Um, even to do a mobile clinic, you know, it has to be cleared by the police. You don't just gather people, uh, lest you are, you, are, you, are, you are telling them some doctrine for change, you know, how it is politically. So, um, that's when that woman, that woman, uh, the, the, the member in charge of police, it's just a local, you know, police station, 
um, in the wood started to appreciate the cause. She, she really saw that, oh, these ladies, they are up to um, empowerment of the other women. So she had a buy-in, right? But we still have work to help her to take us through to the next stage where we can really influence policy and um, make it known that things are not okay down there. At the same time as trying to make these changes, what happens to a survivor of an act like this? Where, where are there any resources? Is there anywhere that? That is a hegro for us. What we can do uh, sometimes is to mobilize a few items of groceries, you know, give them counseling, of which we still need uh, more counselors trained. Uh, that's an outcry from the leadership. You know, we, we are a member of uh, Generation Equality, and one of our, our, our co um, coalition objectives is to have feminist leadership in place. So we need our leaders trained in counseling. Um, Marange Women's Alliance is a group of diverse women. Regardless of them being in a rural community, uh, they are teachers in there, they are nurses, they are even lawyers uh, within the group. So they are quite phenomenal women amongst them. So if we, 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 we get the resources, get the women trained, peer-to-peer -peer support, you know, we'll go an extra mile. It's not just about items, it's about also you know, psychological assistance. And also, uh, if you look at that, that picture there, that is a typical chicken uh, run. I don't know what you call it in America. Chicken coop. coop. Chicken coop. I had a problem with that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the chicken coop, that shows potential. They can do a chicken project. Yeah, in Zimbabwe, we call them broilers. I don't know what you call them. The ones that mature in four, six weeks. They, they need also um, support that will take them out of poverty. You talked about SDG2, uh, out of poverty. Because their vulnerability uh, to trafficking chiefly is because of poverty. There is high poverty because they're coming from a very desolate um, uh, um, geographical area where also, climate change has taken a toll. You know, the previous cyclone, it I, it uh, ransacked the fields, everything. And um, naturally, that place is not a place that is good for agriculture. Maybe just got rearing, animal husbandry, and stuff. So the survivors still need a lot of support. It's, it's, it's not about just identifying them and, and the they will ask, okay, from here, where do I go? And I yeah. assume, you know, training of men as well, sensitivity training, you know, I, I think that we can't do any of this sort of help unless we have the men as partners. Can you see that happening? Definitely, because if you look at some of the pictures, you'll see there are men there. We have a buy-in. We have uh, the late um, one-head man, Chiazwa, he passed on um, a few months ago. He was very supportive. Because the reporting uh, channel, you start from the head man, you go to the chief, then you go to the police, and so on and so on. So that one would never say no to any intervention that Maranga Women's Alliance wanted to do. And we have uh, some men who really uh, are supportive. But not much. We still need to... to to mobilize more. It'll be the women who make the change for sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So I realize that we are almost, uh, we're at our five o'clock, but I also assume that there's probably a bunch of people in this room who probably have questions. So if we can um, stop now, is that okay, Andrea? Yep, that's great. I can move it. I need to get up. And by the way, thank you for your bravery. Oh. Uh, 
thank you very much, Abby. You know, your story is very sad. <coughs> but then I believe that uh, this is something to do with human rights. Because we are talking about, uh, what do you call it? Abuse, eh? And uh, I believe that it cannot be fought from outside only. It needs internal intervention. Why do I say so? Because from your explanation, I think there is need for strong lobbying and advocacy. And I believe that in Zimbabwe, we should have organizations for women that fights the rights for, for women. So you need to engage some of those civil societies whose interest is to fight the rights for women to help you bring awareness to the, to the community, not only in Ma, is it Marange, but yeah. in, in Harare, so that at least everybody knows, should, should be aware of what is happening there. Uh, should also use the women association. I know that in Zimbabwe, every region where there's ASM taking place, there are women association. There should be about 40 or 45 association. Those women can actually help you also to make, to make it possible that this issue needs publicity. People have to know what is happening in Zimbabwe because this cannot continue. See, look at those women, the diseases that they're suffering, just the, the pain that they go through. Something needs to be done. Much as help can come out from outside, but then it has to be married to help within so that the two can work together and fight and find a solution to this. So in case you need to be connected to the women associations in Zimbabwe, I can connect you. Uh, if it, you, uh, and in, in uh, Southern Africa, actually Zimbabwe is part of the Sadiq women in mining. I can also connect, I can bring this to the attention of the Sadiq women in mining who can do the lobbying. I, can, I, I should not say for you, I should say for us, because I'm also a, a woman, because what affects a, another woman affects me as well. So that is just my, my contribution. Thank you. Can I respond? Thank you very much, uh, Mama Pauline. Um, thank you. That is. Um, uh, ideal, ideal. The um, political arena in Zimbabwe is very complicated. The ruling party in Zimbabwe controls almost every entity, including the Women's League. Is that political? The ZMF, Zimbabwe Miners Federation, is controlled by government including its wings, including the women's uh, ZMF wing. I, I talk to the women uh, within those, those entities. So the question is, whose interests do they serve? If it sounds Marange Women's Alliance-ish and um, anti, government because you're talking about human rights, the dates will be postponed until you get okay to get a meeting. We have recently written a letter, not recently, um, beginning of the year, to, to, to the Ministry of Gender to want to collaborate with them. We have not got any response. It's a fight. Our challenges 
are quite uh, up there because you have nowhere to report and we need to be listened to. Now if Abby is speaking from outside and it goes there, it will be heard. But unfortunately, why would Abby be speaking in America? You know the implication, don't you? In, in our language, we speak in riddles. I'm sorry, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah? The organizations are there, Pauline. We work with local CBOs, which are also, I said before, male-dominated. But the story, the actual story, is not being told. Because we have other interests to serve, and also we have a status quo to maintain. Then that's the problem. Hi, thank you for speaking out, and if you could somehow convey, um, I think, our, the group's gratitude for the other people, women who spoke out in the video, so brave, and um, I really appreciate what Susan and the others have done with the Tuesday Talks. So, especially as it relates to diamonds, what is the government's vulnerable spot? Like, I understand that the KP, KP with Zimbabwe is being, even chairing the KP, right, at some point, like the irony, and sort of overwhelming to the point of being disgusting. But um, if you could speak to, if, you, if this conversation, this audience encompassed all of Western diamond jewelry buyers from um, major luxury, so-called luxury houses, down to individuals like myself, what, what would you want us to know? What, what is the weakness um, where the Zimbabwean government may actually feel some accountability to protect its own people? Yeah, thank you. We don't ask for much. As uh, Marange Women's Alliance and as women at grassroots, we want policies that will protect the women. We are asking for a mining, uh, mines and, and mineral uh, act that addresses the issue of artisanal miners. They are not licensed. They are wrong. They're all over. And we have been trying as a country to, to reform the law, which has been uh, since 1963. The mines, uh, uh, yes, the law in Zimbabwe, the legislation, it's a okay. cake. It's no longer applicable. Let's reform the laws. And the laws should speak into uh, the gender policy and have women protected. That's all. Because if we have artisanal miners loose, there is nothing regulating them. There is, they are not regulated. They are just doing things willy-nilly. And that's why they also have access to the police. What is uh, ZCDC doing about it? ZCDC is the, the government company that runs the, the, the mines, the diamond mining uh, uh, operation in Zimbabwe together with the Chinese. So we are saying we want the laws to be put in place which will protect the mining communities. And we, we, we are asking for the diamond mining uh, industry in Zimbabwe to benefit the community so that women are not that vulnerable. There's poverty there, high levels of poverty. I don't know how I can even define it. Families are going hungry. So if that is addressed, we, I will not uh, call on the jewelry industry to call for sanctions for the Zimbabwean diamonds. Rather, I'll say, why don't you join us? Right? Have a voice. Ask for laws. Ask for policies. Ask for the beneficiation. For the, uh, for the for the community, yeah. I think as far as what we can do and what um, how you can make a difference and what the vulnerabilities are, um, I think that we saw that it is the reputation and especially being head of, ahead of the KP right now, 
and that the jewelers were able to sign a petition and quell the systematic rape of women. That's the vulnerability. They saw that they don't want to have the bad reputation. That's the vulnerability, and that can start here, and, um, and it can start a Merengue Women's Alliance as well. Um, they are succeeding in changing the norms around sex workers, and that's the beginning. They are, I can kind of just briefly talk about how this whole sex trafficking came. One of my um, board members of Responsible Jewelry Transformative works in, as, um, in sex work and sex trafficking um, in Michigan. We're from Michigan. And um, she, in, in the, what we see in Michigan is, you know, the, the truck route, anyone here in the Midwest um, goes from Chicago to Detroit. And um, it's, a, it's a big, big area for sex workers and for sex trafficking and also labor trafficking. And um, I said, you know, will you get on and we just, we're starting to form Reggae Women's Alliance. Will you get on and, and speak to the women? And afterwards, when she talked about it and what sex trafficking was, um, somebody had said, we didn't know what this was. We didn't put the name to it when our daughters were disappearing and going off with an artisanal minor and then going to another artisanal minor and not coming home. Wasn't it your niece yeah. Yeah, exactly. mm. who this happened to? Mm. And so going back again to information sharing, that's, that's how this began. And within Merengue Women's Alliance, one of the other leaderships said um, recently, she said, which is something I think we all, yeah. at least from, from my age group growing up, I was guilty of this as well. I mean, we're, so, we're all people and we all kind of have the same things that we either don't know about or that we need to change in ourselves. But growing up, you know, we looked at prostitutes and we saw them on, you know, I always say Starsky and Hutch, where they were the friends with the police, right? The, the pimp was the friends with the police, and the women were in jail, and it was a big joke on that show. And, in, um, and we've come so far here in the US. And in Merengue Women's Alliance, one of the other leadership said, you know, when I was growing up, um, as a schoolgirl, we used to laugh at the prostitutes or call them names. And now we, as leaders of Merengue Women's Alliance, are changed. And they're changing the norms. And that's where it starts. And so if we can all come together and, and expect these norms to change, and as jewelers speak out when we see something, we can all be the change. In the Merengue Women's Alliance, these women are strong, they're smart, and they've got big hearts. Thank you. Um, I was curious, sorry, over here. Um, I was curious, uh, given what you've said about how much corruption there is and how um, political it can get, if there is safety for the organization itself of the Merengue Women's Alliance, um, and if there are any threats to the organization. There's no safety, my dear. I mean, I mean, in the UK right now, doing uh, work which I should not be doing, doing care work, because I cannot be home. That's what it is. But somebody has to say something. When we started, and I know I've talked about this before, um, Dewa Mavinga at Human Rights Watch was a strong supporter. Um, as I said, there was a headman that passed away that was a strong supporter. So, um, you know. We just need to reach out and have more strong supporters and speak out safely. Here, I did, um, as always, um, did pull the leadership. Do we want to talk about this? Are you okay with this? Are we going to mention the implications of the guards? And the votes were yes. The votes were yes. I just actually have a... Is this something that is happening all around Zimbabwe, or is Merengue a unique situation? Um, in my head, I'm trying to think why wouldn't the World Diamond Council come in and um, sort of make a big fuss? Um, what makes it unique is the diamond mine, nothing else. 
the way the diamond was uh, discovered, uh, you know, the former president Mugabe, what he did first was to say, oh, it was a political move. I don't know what the strategy was. It's free for all. We called it fufue. Um, you won't believe it. You'll buy a loaf of bread for a cup of diamonds. Yes. And um, it's a unique case, which is used for political uh, ambitions that need to be fulfilled. And um, we question where the diamond revenue goes, because there is no development. So many carats of diamonds are leaving Marange every day, in, day out. But the country is in shambles. The economy is 100 US dollars per, uh, you would get it for 1 million something. Zimbabwe dollars, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah? So, so it's, it's a unique case. And uh, we are saying something should be done. But with the present situation, resource governance that is there in that country, in my country, not that country, um, we need a lot of reforms. There's no transparency. We don't know how the, the, the tenders are obtained for this uh, Chinese company to come and get uh, to mine the diamonds and anything. Everything is just not in the public domain. And as such, when crimes are committed, they go unpunished because they will also unravel all the other corruption that is behind. So it, it's, it's a vicious cycle. It's not just women going for sex work, sex work because uh, they're desperate. No. There is a systematic um, crime that is going on there, which I believe, if there's political will, it can be uh, corrected. Yeah. Brandy, to your question, from that first webinar series in 2020, there was extensive conversation, not conversation, invitation for the World Diamond Council to join that to participate. We sent them the links after the first series of webinars. There's been communication with them after that, asking if they could help to stop the um, protests from being interfered with. So it's not like they're not aware these conversations are taking place. They've been invited and informed. I, I know that. I kind of wanted to make I just sure wanted the audience to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? So you're in the UK right now. Do you need any help? Do you need help with rent and things? Is your family OK? You are directly impacted, and you are directly here with us. Can we help? <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I mean, you can speak with Abby. I, I think that. Um, Moringa Women's Alliance just needs support. And, um, you know, like I said, we're working on the billboard campaign. That's one thing. Um, uh, really, um, there's been support from the jewelry industry. It's mostly right now on a regular basis, monthly going through um, just the responsible jewelry transformative is supporting Moringa Women's Alliance for monthly data. For now, 100 women strong. So we have monitors in every single village. Um, women that are live there. Billy, the um, chairwoman, has been, um, she's been speaking in Botswana at Mining and Daba right now um, with some of the members of OWEM, African Women in Mining. She was um, speaking out at a um, South African um, gender-based violence um, conference that was held there by another NGO. So she's now um, being invited as Marigi Women's Alliance to be speaking out. She's been a community journalist for a long time and was with uh, Zella before, but now the Marangi Women's Alliance stand on their own two feet 
in representing themselves throughout Africa and speaking. So supporting them is the best thing. Um, they've been asking for the chicken coop for a long time. And um, they think if they get that, pardon? It's on the flyers. It's on the flyers. Um, because with that chicken coop, they see themselves as being able to pay their own monthly data for their members and to be able to do more um, events in person. I just want to offer my own, since I'm sitting here next to you, um, my own few things that I would like to do. The first is I would like to introduce you to the head of the Responsible Jewelry Council who lives in London. She is a woman and she is a journalist. And I think it would be very important that you sit with her and that she hears this from you. Second thing I'd like to do if, with your discussion is make sure that the entire Women's Jewelry Association learns about this throughout the ent entire United States of America. And I'll also talk to the WDC again, but this seems to be a better start. <laughs> Susan, are you going to talk about the billboard campaign at all tomorrow? And if not, could you mention what it is now? Okay, so the billboard campaign um, is, we want to have a billboard. The women of um, Merengue want to have a billboard. Again, this is something from my friend Sarah, who's on my board of directors, who did a billboard um, in uh, Michigan. And there's, we've also been talking here in Chicago um, to learn from the frameworks here um, on what the billboard campaigns have done, what they mean, what these impacts are. You'll see, I'm sure everyone has an O'Hare Airport here when you come through Chicago. Um, billboards that say, can you see me? Do you see me? You go to the bathrooms and you, and you shut the stall doors and it has numbers. Um, we don't, Marenghi, um, there's not near the support system but through one of the programs that they have, the Tuesday Talks, you will hear other NGOs coming on that want to speak out, say they do um, have a network to build on. Not the support systems, of course, that we have in the US with the counselors and the doctors and the lawyers, but, but um, like I said, um, the women are strong and, um, and they can get these um, supports together. So the billboard, they want to have an actual billboard coming into the concession. Um, uh, Zimbabwe in general is a, a large area, you know all the statistics for trafficking. Um, but as you can see, there's, there's people that get trafficked in thinking they're just coming for work. And, um, and we designed the billboard a year ago already um, to say that, uh, what is it? Diamonds should be bought and sold, not women. Yeah, diamonds should be bought and sold, not women. And we are also taking um, a leaf from what you did in San Francisco when they say it, not in my backyard, yeah? So it's a silent voice that we want to install at um, a location where we, we think that's where uh, all traffic converges, you know, entering into Maranga from all the other provinces and highways. We install our people there and let it speak, you know, even uh, the artisanal miners or the corporate mining um, officials, anyone passes through there. They will see it and they will hear the silent voice. Yeah, so kindly support uh, that billboard installation. It will go a long way. Yeah. Thank you again for being here and for your bravery. And thank you, Susan, for making this happen. It's incredibly important and incredibly enlightening. And know that you've got this whole room behind you that I can tell you for sure. Hit the donation button then, because Susan's funding a lot of this. <laughs> thank you.